video, I'm going to be giving you four Etsy shop ideas that could legitimately make you well into the six figures, multiple later six figures in the first calendar year in 2024. I'm going to be sharing these shops ideas based off what I've explored in the competitive landscape of the most recent shops pushing the most sales volume in the shortest amount of time. And yes, one of these shops almost did almost a million dollars or close to a million dollars in revenue with seemingly good profit margins in less than one year on Etsy in 2023. Keep in mind when you're starting a business for the first time, there's a lot of learning curve that comes with business. So I'm sharing what these shops did, but everybody goes at their own pace when they're starting a business, right? The learning curve for you might take three months and it might take somebody else nine months just because they have to acquire a new skill. They may have different barriers of entry that you don't have, or maybe you do have as well. But the moral of the story here is to get inspired by what's possible. And these are really actually like legitimate, like great business models to go after. So yeah, let's get into this video. How did I find these shop ideas? I do it really simply by going into E-Rank. So inside E-Rank, you can go to competition, top sellers, and you can come over here and sort by the year. So 2023, I'm curious about what shops are pushing the most sales volume for the shortest amount of time, because those are the ones that are obviously taking off the fastest. And what I did is I also can come over here and basically you can select different types of niches that you want to analyze. So what I did is just did a generic search. And then I came back over here and I started looking at shops that were pushing the most sales for the shortest time period. Keep in mind that the business models that I chose are actually legitimate business models. I really did the best that I could research wise to make sure that I'm not sharing ideas that, you know, had a bunch of sales in 2023 or under a year, but they're doing a bunch of trademarked infringement <laughs> or something, or they have some other anomaly outlier source of traffic. And that's why their shop is doing so much sales. So I try to find legitimate Etsy shop ideas for you that it can be realistic for you to recreate. Now, obviously I can't can't guarantee 100% profit, or I don't even know what the true profit is, but we are going to be going through these from the least revenue to the top revenue. But you'll see by the end of this video, it's pretty easy with quick Google searches to get some estimations on what some of these shops profit was. Also, what's really cool about this is what we're going to find is there's pretty consistent attributes when it comes to all of these shops and what they're all doing in common. The first key element is personalization. We're going to see that every single one of these brands offers personalization. Number two, on some level, there is a tier of upsells, meaning when you click on the listing, there is more expensive things to buy. So cheaper price shows on the front end, but there is a work up or work down to different price points. This is going to contribute to increasing their average order value when you have more expensive things to sell. But also when you have cheaper things to sell as well, it also decreases the barrier of entry to spending money with you. So that's also super value to make sure that you're going to want to have tier of upsells and a tier of down sales. Number three, is we're going to see that all of these shops have beautiful aesthetic imagery, but they're not necessarily recreating the wheel when it comes to their imagery, right? They're pretty much simple cells and what's simple is repeatable. And we're going to see that they just basically use a lot of the same mockups or a lot of the same image style on every single listing that they have. And finally, number four is that they don't have any other anomaly traffic coming in. Like we mentioned before, all of their traffic is just coming from inside Etsy and also Etsy ads. Every single one of these shops is, I don't know how much they're spending on Etsy ads, but they are spending on Etsy ads. All right, let's get into shop idea number one. This is a baby print shop. This shop is really geared toward baby items. They also are doing ornaments as well. But when you go into the majority of their listings, they're really using the same mock-up with a bunch of trending fonts and graphics with cute sayings all geared towards children, but then also they really capitalized on the Christmas trends as well, doing a bunch of ornaments. But overall, I would say this shop is mostly baby. So this shop got over 18,000 sales in in less than one year. So they opened up in July. So less than nine months old with over 18,000 sales with an average order value of around $16. That's over $290,000 in revenue in less than nine months in business. I could be wrong, but at first glance into this shop, it seems like they're an Etsy POD shop using Printify or Printful as their print provider. But when you do a little bit deeper digging, when you read into their description and you analyze their price point here, you can see that their pricing 
listing is very, very competitive. So based off their pricing and the language that they're using in their listings and the promise of being able to ship next day, it's likely that they're not actually using a print provider and they're actually printing this themselves. And we can see that here because when we go to like Printful and Printify, right, we can find this a similar Gerber baby onesie, but the price point is too high once you factor in shipping. So like I said, it looks like they're doing a POD, a print on demand model, but probably their own print provider. And now this is an option if you don't want to do print on demand. It does help you become more competitive, but you are going to have to actually print everything in house. And I promise you with a quick Google search, you can learn every single thing that you need to learn about screen printing or printing on retail clothing on YouTube. There is endless information. So if you really want to come to the space and become a print shop and be the most competitive print shop, you may want to consider this type of business model for you just because you're going to be more competitive. You're going to have more control. It is a lot bigger headache when it comes to logistics. But like I said, overall, you're going to be a more competitive shop and you're probably going to end up pushing more sales volume because you have more control over your pricing. After just doing another quick search on what something like these Gerber comfort colors onesies would cost, right? So they're probably getting the onesie and this is just on a wholesale for five pack for less than $4. So if they're buying in bulk, my guess is they're probably getting these blanks for less than $2, maybe like anywhere between two and $3 after you factor shipping into your house, right? But then if you own the printing to actually print it, it's really, really inexpensive. When you look at their listings, these prices actually make sense when it actually comes to profit. And just based off of that poor um, wholesale website, that I found that put you at about $4 for uh, one of the onesies. This type of shop will definitely be clearing probably closer to a 40 or 50% profit margin before marketing costs, which is a really good model. It's a really valid business model for Etsy because it leaves a lot of net profit percentage left over for you to invest in marketing for your business. So overall, definitely will set you up for more competitiveness than a print on demand store that's selling on Printify and Printful. But there is going to be a big logistic nightmare on the back end with having to manage all the inventory and the screen printing. And there's just a higher barrier of entry, but again, bigger risk, bigger reward. 100% a viable option for starting a business for the first time. Another key element to this is that they have over 2000 listings. So an under nine months, they got their shop to over 2000 listings, which is a really good KPI to take away if you were going to do something like this. But overall, like I said, they are really maintaining the cohesiveness of the brand. They're using the same mock-up on every single listing and it's serving them well, clearly. So the last thing that I just want to mention about their pricing strategy, along with having a tier of upsells or having lower ticket to a higher ticket option to buy something, they also, I believe, are probably making a dollar or two off their shipping, right? So they're actually profiting a little bit off their shipping to show a cheaper price on the front end, right? Because they're putting $6.99 here, what I'm guessing it's probably first class USPS mail, which is probably not more than $5. So like I mentioned, they're probably making, you know, a little bit over a dollar, maybe $2 or a little bit over $2 for shipping as well. So that's just another way to help increase your net profit percentage before marketing. And when you're in such a price competitive niche like this, especially in this landscape or in POD with print providers, crunching your numbers is even more and more vital. So you do not want to overlook this whatsoever. Moving into number two, this this is an actual print on demand shop, but a print on demand shop using probably Printify, but doing all of the right things, right? Like when it comes to POD, they're coming in hot when it comes to doing all of the right things. <laughs> when I talk about the attributes for this, it might sound like little things. Like when I talk about lower price on the front end, when I talk about putting a badge or adding a dollar or two to shipping, right? It all seems like little things, but when you do everything as a collective, it makes that engine super, super strong. And this shop figured it out. So this shop has had over 17,000 sales. This shop has been open for less than 11 months, but it has over 17,000 sales already. Their average order value is a little bit higher at about $20 per order. And guys, the way that I'm calculating this is by basically taking an average based off their top 50 most purchased products from their reviews, basically. So this is not like perfect math, but like you get a pretty good idea, honestly. So that's over $348,000 in revenue on top line revenue for less than 11 months in being open as a business, which is pretty dang good for never having to touch the product. Guys, if you don't know what print on demand is, 
This is different than like what I just mentioned before with actually taking a shirt and printing it on like physically yourself. Print on demand is a model where you don't actually have to touch the product at all, where basically you would have a design like you see here. Basically you would have a design like this, but you don't actually have to print this on this white shirt, this blank, they call them blanks, right? You would just use a tool like Printify, right? Where basically when you get an order in Etsy, this Printify account is integrated with your shop. And then basically Printify gets notified that you got an order and then gets fulfilled for you. And unless you offer personalization, which again is a core attribute. So like in this case, right, where you have this add personalization request here where you can put in your dream team, right? Now, one other thing to mention here, personalization in print on demand is really everything. So just like you can offer personalization if you're actually printing the shirt yourself in your own you know, house or office. When you're doing print on demand, you also should offer personalization as well. So here you have the option to customize your name here where it says Miss Wilson, right? So you could add that personalization request right here. Now, one way to streamline this, as we know now, there's a tool called Hello Custom that will automate this whole process for you. And there's a link in the description for Hello Custom if you wanna check them out. It's pretty much just like a guarantee that you're gonna to wanna to offer personalization with a print on demand or a print shop just to add a layer, a moat of protection protection or competitiveness around your shop. And with Hello Custom, it's super automated and like easy. So it's just a matter of editing, approving, or denying the order request that comes in and making sure that basically the blank is set up properly with the proper personalization request on there. So here's an example of this shirt here. So I found this exact shirt here on Printify. So it's the unisex Bella Canvas. 3000 RCY. And basically you can see that if with Printify Premium, if someone purchases this from you, your cost that you have to pay after you get a purchase is 1093 and your shipping is gonna be about, let's just say $5, but it's really starting at 475. But let's just make this a worst case scenario. Let's pretend that the shipping cost to you to ship the item from a Printify warehouse is $6. So with this item in my card, it's gonna cost me as a buyer to $27.95. So that is what I'm getting billed. So if we take $27.95 and we deduct out all the costs, we need to take out $285 for merchant and Etsy selling fees. Then we're going to take out that $17 for the cost of the shirt and the shipping to the customer. So $27.95 minus 17 minus $285. That leaves you about $8 profit left over, which is about a 29% profit margin percentage, which is putting you in the bucket of now having a business model of a a very slim profit margin percentage before marketing. So 29% doesn't give you a huge room to play when it comes to investing in your ads. But if you do your Etsy ads properly and you tweak the dials properly, which that is the goal for Etsy ads, the goal is to get your ads budget to the max budget allowance, but profitably. So on a really high level, the best POD shops that I've seen have to get their Etsy ads budget down to a marketing cost percentage of less than 10% per month to still be clearing around a 20% mark, which is kind of hard. But remember like the first one, it's really important here that you're crunching the numbers and obsessing over the mar the, your profit margins, right? Because that piece of the pie left over, some part of that needs or should go to your marketing cost percentage. And every single month when you tweak the dials on your ads for your Etsy PPC, you really want to make sure that you're not going over a 10% marketing cost percentage. I have a full Etsy ads playlist in my channel that I really implore you guys to check out. If you don't know anything about Etsy ads or you're just starting out or you're super confused or you don't understand what ROAS mean or break even ROAS, make sure you check out my channel because it's not one strategy fits all for every business. Every business has different needs, fears, and goals. It has different, you know, financial means. <laughs> and also it's just different. Every shop is different, contingent on your price point, what you're selling, what your profit margins are, all of those things. So make sure you pull out the information and understand the Etsy ads game before you begin to play hit for sure. So you don't waste money. Now let's get into shop idea number three. This is doing scented candles with personalization with a production partner. So as you can see here, this shop has had over 27,000 sales and their first review came in of July 15th. So let's just pretend that their shop actually opened in June. That means that their shop is less than 10 months 
months old. With an average sale price around $14, that puts them at over $385,000 in less than 10 months. After doing a little bit more deeper diving in their description, it's likely that they're not actually making the candles, like making the formula for the, what goes inside the wax themselves, because it says hand poured in the USA, where if they were the one making it, it would usually be really easy to identify that and see that in their shop, especially in their about section or something like that. But they don't really have any of those descriptors, right? They're saying it's hand poured in the USA, but I don't know. My guess is that they have a production partner, but maybe that production partner is in the USA. And then they're adding that personalization component, which this is totally viable as you know, on Etsy, you're allowed to have a production partner. And then they're going in and doing the designing of the personalization requests on top of it. And just with like a quick Google search, I found a lot of different websites that allow you to use them as production partners or private label partners for your candle production. My guess is, is probably one of these candles or like this candle, it looks very similar to what they're selling, but I don't know if this is the actual website, but like I said, it's really easy to find production partners or at least way easier than when I got in nowadays. It's <laughs> a lot of things can be found on the internet. And the biggest thing for this with your production partner that you find, if you don't want to actually make the formula yourself is making sure that you can stay price competitive. And again, like we mentioned, they're not really reinventing the wheel on anything. They're just doing trending fonts, funny sayings, catchy sayings, but really using the same mock-up over and over again. Nothing really crazy going on here, right? And they got up to 136 listings, which isn't that hard to achieve as well, especially if it's the same mock-up over and over. Again, another key element is they have a tier of upsells. It only has two tiers of upsells, a 10 ounce, a four ounce or a nine ounce, but it offer also that personalization component there as well. Overall, the candles seem pretty easy to do because with the help of that production partner, you will just basically have to get the machinery to go ahead and print those labels, which again, I even have videos on my own YouTube channel of how you can basically print stuff on stickers with like a Mumbin printer, or honestly, there's so many printers that you can find on Amazon nowadays that are like less than $200, which is a pretty good business model because every order that comes in, you're basically taking about 30 seconds to input that personalization request with a template that you probably already built in Canva. And then you're just printing it on a sticker and throwing it on the candle and putting it in some cute packaging. Also, when it comes to packaging for something like this, as much as we like to stay away from China, China normally does have the best offerings when it comes to packaging and recycled packaging as well. Alibaba is normally where we go for packaging or I have used in the past a little bit more of an expensive option, which is called Eco and Close, because for them, I for sure know it's like super eco-friendly, but it's not the most cost-effective. So Alibaba, cheaper option, Eco and Close, second option, but not super budget-friendly. And finally, shop idea number four that did over $820,000 in less than 12 months in 2023. All right, this one was super crazy. So this shop had over 27,000 sales in less than 12 months with an average order value of around $29. So again, that's putting them at over $800,000 their first year in business. And this shop is a whiskey inspired personalization class store with a swapping 15 listings. And yes, all of their sales are super legitimate as their very first review that came in is for a product that exists in their shop. It's not like they were selling face masks or something like that, even though face masks were pretty much over in 2023. So I don't know why I said that. Now the barrier to entry on this one is a little bit higher as I did some more diving on what it would actually take to print custom engravings on a glass material. Now it's likely that they probably are buying the blanks, the glass blanks from Ali Alibaba, right? On a quick, quick glance on Alibaba and you type in whiskey glass, if you buy them wholesale, you can find bundled good looking whiskey glasses for less than like 70 cents per glass with shipping. So the cost here isn't so much actual blank that they're printing on. The cost here is probably more expensive to ship it because it's a fragile item in glass. So the shipping honestly probably costs more than the actual glass itself. Plus the equipment needed to actually laser print or engrave on glass. What I read, which again, I did a quick search on YouTube. So after doing a quick search on YouTube, I found this video here that literally shows you how to print on whiskey glasses just like this and the machinery needed. Now from looking at the comment section on 
the video, it did seem like the barrier to entry on this is the machinery because it's actually like probably even more expensive than like screen printing on shirts, right? One comment said that the minimum that these machines cost is about $10,000. But when you look at the bigger picture, right? What is a $10,000 investment if you even only did $500,000 in your first year in business? It's one thing to break even in your first year in business. To be that profitable in your first year of business is really, really amazing, especially because the shop only has 15 listings that are active. So because of that and because of that barrier of entry, right, that is also going to make you a more competitive shop as well because less people are going to want to enter into that space because of that barrier to entry. But like I mentioned, like, I don't know, I did some crazy things to gain capital when I first started my shop. Actually, it wasn't that crazy. I just put it all on a credit card. I'm not saying to do that, but bigger risk, bigger reward in some cases. This was the link about all the information about the laser printer that they were showcasing on the video and basically how to set it up, how to do it properly, all the things that he learned. But I don't see any prices when it comes to this, but I'm sure you can reach out and figure out how you would get your hands on one of these machines. And like I said, one of the comments pointed out that these machines start at $10,000, even if it costs $15,000. What's $15,000 to an almost million dollar business your first year with probably what would I am guessing? after I estimated out the glass costs, like if I go to Alibaba right now, like a lot of these glasses, like I mentioned for a minimum order of only 48 pieces, right? You're starting at 52 cents, 48 cents, so forth. Like you get the point. So if you're running a product line like that, right? The most expensive thing, like I mentioned, is probably going to be shipping because it's fragile and also eventually probably labor costs if you want to replace yourself and not actually have to do the fulfillment by yourself. But overall, when you have such a big profit margin business model like that, it gives you a lot of room for error and a lot of room to play with offers and really kickstarting the business easier than say in a different niche where money is really tight because your profit margins are so low. I'll make sure that I link both of those links down below in this video if you want to investigate further. But overall, guys, I hope that you got some real value. If none of these ideas appeal to you, at least you get what I'm looking for when it comes to seeing what the opportunity is out there and how I'm analyzing the opportunity. It really comes down to looking at the landscape, the competitive landscape, and then really just investing the time to investigate on what is the proper way of going about this, right? But overall, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye, guys.